Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Stacy Seedorf about the 24-7 classic Slave to the Music. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. Alright, here it is, the story behind Slave to the Music by 24-7. My interview with Stacy Seedorf. Enjoy! Stacy Seedorf is a Dutch singer and songwriter who is active in the music scene for more than 30 years. He is mostly known for his releases with Eurodance Act 24-7, for which Stacy wrote most of the lyrics. 24-7 sold over 20 million records worldwide and some of their most well-known tracks are Is It Love, Take Me Away, Keep On Trying, and of course the 1993 classic Slave to the Music. That one peaked within the top 10 in at least 8 countries. Furthermore, it was a number 1 hit in Zimbabwe and it peaked at the number 2 in Australia, where it also became a platinum record. Because of the upcoming 30th anniversary of Slave to the Music, I recently sat down with Stacy to ask him about the story behind this classic. But we also spoke about his state of mind network and much more. My first question to Stacy was, around what age he started to listen to music? I think it was, uh, it started as soon as I, uh, I, I could hear things, as soon as my ears started working, I started listening to music and that's basically because of my parents. My parents were music lovers. My father was a musician, he was a very famous singer in Suriname in South America where he was born. So there was always music in our, in our house, so I was surrounded with music yeah. ever since I was born. And what kind of music did they listen to? Soul music. Soul music. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the platters, like uh, uh, you know, all this Motown, Motown soul music. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I what I what I was brought up with. Yeah. And when you were a bit older, what kind of music were you listening to? Michael then? Jackson. Yeah. yeah. Michael Jackson was also the because my father stimulated me to be a performer. He was a performer by himself. So. When he saw that I was moving on music, he started stimulating that, and and then he uh, uh, he, he he compared me with Michael Jackson, and then he showed me Michael Jackson, and I and that's how I I really wanted to be Michael Jackson yeah. to, uh, from a certain age. Started dancing like him. He even bought me clothes oh. the way he was wearing them, and I and I had a very high voice when I was uh -huh. a kid, so I sang all the music from the song from Michael Jackson on his key. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was like. It was like known already, like from the start, like okay, Stacy's gonna be a performer. Yeah, yeah, I perform. I danced on the tables during parties, uh, family parties. Mm -hmm. Everybody got tired of me, except me myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so no, I was I was a performer at yeah. a very very young age. Yeah, yeah. 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 So and, and around what age did you start like more listening to like house and hip hop? Well, hip hop music started when I was I think I was ten years old, eleven years old. You know, very slowly. Uh, the, the American music came to Europe and then everybody started, it was a long time ago, I'm a very old man, mm -hmm. Twan, so, so this was the time where you got breakdancing and yeah. Electric Boogie came to Europe, you know, and this was on hip hop and rap music. So this is how I got, uh, uh, um, how, I, how the, this music confronted with me. This is how I got to learn from friends in the streets, from my friends and family who were older, they all had rap and hip hop music. Yeah. And House came later, House came by the end of the 80s. Yeah, yeah 88 I think so. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And my First, the first track that I thought, wow, this is great, was the track of Tyree Cooper. I don't know if you know him. Turn up the bass. Turn up the bass. Yeah, yeah, yeah turn up the bass. Yeah. yeah. Do you know uh, what was it? Fast Eddie. Fast Eddie. Yeah. Get, get up. Yeah, get up. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, up, yeah. Get on up. Yeah. FSD. Yeah, it was wonderful. Those were the first tracks that I heard that was house music combined with with hip hop, yeah. and that was hip house hip music. House. That's how they called it back yeah. then. And I just knew that this is the type of music that I want to make because I didn't feel myself as a hip hopper or mm -hmm. like a dark rapper. But this this combination of European music mixed with American uh, uh, ideas, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I was very charmed with yeah. that. Yeah. And, and was this also around the same time you started like writing your own music? Well, I started writing my music and and and, and texts long before that because I was very critical in music and I, I listened to music in a different way. This I didn't know that I was different in that way, but my mother told me, what is it that you hear in music? Because I said, mama, do you hear this? Thing? Listen to the bass. He said, what do you mean the bass? What is a bass? I said, listen, can you hear it? And nobody can understand what I was saying, but 
uh, so I was said, no, this should be different. They, they should have made it like this or they should change mm -hmm. the, the lyrics. And this is how I started to, to be creative. Yeah. And I, I, I discovered that I had a creative mind in mm -hmm. some way. So I started writing melodies and I started, I bought my, my synthesizer so that I can practice, so that I can give my, my creative spirit uh, mm -hmm. uh, space to, to develop. So yeah. this, this was around my 16, 17 yeah. years, yeah. And, and do you remember your very first ever release? Of course, my official release was in 1991 and that was uh, a Turn Up The Music. That was Turn Up the Music, and that was a track that I, it was a hip house track mm -hmm. as well. And it had a sample of Michael Jackson, Off the Wall, in it. Uh, and the rap was terrible. If I listen to it now, I'm like, oh my God. But at the time, I was, I was, I was so proud yeah, of that. Of course, yeah. yeah, and I can still remember that I had the demo, and I went, I just went to the record companies. It was a completely different time. It was the end of the 80s. I just went into a, to the building of a record company and said that I have an appointment with the A&R manager, which was not true, of course, but they were all like, uh, uh, oh, well, I think he has an appointment. It's not in the agenda, but let me just call him. And then I said, yeah, I got the next hit for you right here. So you better listen to it or I will go to someone else. And then they started listening to it. And one of them took the track. That was turn of the turn of the music. Was it rhythm import? I think? Yes, yeah, that yeah. was rhythm import in, in Amsterdam. He was like, "Who are you? There, there is something with you. Uh -huh. Let me let's hear the track. Don't go to so, someone else. Uh -huh. Let me listen." And then he heard it, and then he said, "Yeah, well, I think this is a this could be a hit." Yeah. And that was my first uh, a small success. I had some releases before that, but they all. I mean, I worked hard for was it. it. First effect or something like that? Full effect. Oh, full effect, yeah. Full effect, yeah. But I think full effect was after uh, Turn Up The yeah. Music. It was right after Turn Up The Music. It was full effect. It was all fun, you know, but it was a struggle because mm -hmm. I was so ambitious, Twan. Mm -hmm. I was, I knew that I was, I had to hit the big stage. Yeah. I yeah. just knew it. I visualized it. Yeah. I was already the successful artist even before my breakthrough, yeah. you know? But in spirit, I was already. And uh, so that was my, my journey towards that. But it started with Turn Up The Music. That was, that was a dance uh, yeah, hit, yeah. 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 So yeah, for this vlog, we're gonna talk about Slave To The Music from 24-7, yeah. uh, yeah. a track uh, with raps from you, vocals by Nance, and the production uh, was from the hands of Ruud van Rijen. Yeah. Uh, first things first, uh, how did you get in touch with Ruud? Well, the, the funny thing is that in that time, I told you I was very ambitious, all right? So I was everywhere. Whenever there was something, or whenever there was some party or somewhere where I could be discovered, I wanted to be there because mm -hmm. I was convinced that yeah. one day I will be at the right time in the right place. Someone would yeah. see my talent because yeah. I was I was convinced that yeah. I was talented. You were super eager. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and people felt it. It was I, I it was my radiation. My energy was like that. So. Um, once I was in a, in a place called the DMC Convention, which is now the Amsterdam Dance Event, mm -hmm. but it used to be the DMC Convention. I was there, and then Sven van Veen, who was from M uh, DJ, DJ Sven and MC Michael yeah, G. the Holiday Rap. Yeah, Sven van Veen was there, and he had contact with Ruud van Rijen, and then Captain Hollywood uh, was out of the, uh, uh, he went solo, yeah. all right? So they got a hold of me, they, they saw that I was doing things, I was performing, and I was everywhere, and then they said, uh, uh, do you want to be the support act of 24-7? Because then Captain Hollywood was still in the act and they said, okay, they are on a tour in England and the, the support act is sick. And we heard about you because there was no internet yeah, in exactly. that time, you yeah. know. They said, we heard about you. Do you want to be their support act? And I said, yes, of course. Yeah. I thought this is this is my opportunity. Yeah. I knew 24-7 from I Can Stand It. And I said, I thought this is the music I want to make myself yeah. as well. So. I went with them on a tour through England and that's where I met Captain Hollywood and that's where I met Nance and that's where I met Jackson Hanks mm -hmm. as well. I was their support act. Then we went through, through Europe and then we, I supported them in their shows and then Hollywood went solo yep. right after that tour. And then they knew me and then Ruth van Rijen, he called and he said, Seiji, would you like to come to uh, the studio? Uh, maybe you would like to audition for being in 24 7 hours. Like, wow. This is my. This yeah. is this is it. It's gonna happen now, and th and that's that's the way I got in contact with yeah. with the group and with Ruth Van yeah. So yeah, the first uh, track you did together was it could have been you, yeah. uh, but that single didn't do really much, unfortunately. True. Uh, but then you wrote "Slave to the Music." Yeah. Um, what, what do you remember from the writing process of that one? Well, actually, Twan, to be honest, "Slave to the Music" was already written oh. by me, but nobody knew it. 
you know, I had met Like Is It Love as well, but nobody knew it. I, I was a, an unknown artist and songwriter. But then I came to 24-7 and then there were songwriters already. The track was finished. They said, this is the new track. And I was like, whoa, okay. You know, I was happy to be in the group. So I was very uh, uh, silent and easy and easy to go. And I said, yeah, okay, let's do it. But I, honestly speaking, I didn't like the track that much. Okay, but I was like, okay, they're the expert. You know, they, they probably know how a track should sound. And so we did the song. I wrote to rap myself. And then the song didn't work. And they, actually, I was so disappointed because I was like, this is, I'm in a big group now. Why, why is there no success? But when you're looking back at it, that was my opportunity because I said during a meeting that we had, why don't you let me write a song? Then? And then Ruth said, you, are you, can you write a song? I mean, we need a hit, no, not just a, a simple song. I said, well, let me just give it a try. He said, okay, well, give it a try then. And that was Slave to the Music. Yeah. I sent him Slave to the Music the next day and he was amazed. He said, is this your song? I said, yeah. He said, come to the studio. He called Nance, he said, I think we got the next hit. And then Nance came to the studio and then we recorded it. Yeah. And it, it, what was the process? I was, I was inspired by Nuke. Nuke had um, uh, Nana. Yeah. Oh, Nana. Nana was it. Yeah. yeah. I was inspired by it because I was a DJ at that time mm -hmm. as well. So I was performing and I was a DJ and I played that song and it inspired me so much. I heard the hook in that song and that inspired me to write uh, Slave to the Music. And that's what I offered Reed for 24-7 and he took it straight away. So yeah. do, do you have any idea how long it took you to finish the lyrics? Oh no, that was easy. Uh, to write lyrics, you know, my talent is not to come up with, with songs, actually. You know, people act, ask me often, how do you wrote this hit? Honestly, I don't know. Yeah. You know, my talent is that I, I know how to connect with the field where mm -hmm. the ideas are. They're not my ideas, mm -hmm. but I connect with them. Yeah. They are looking for people to be spread. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of those yeah. mediums, I'm one of those people. Yeah. So I connect and then I got the idea and then I need to record it fast, otherwise yeah, it, it or goes or somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. So I just I just make sure I have my memory card with me, my pen and paper, and as soon as I got yeah. the idea, I just write. Yeah. So so it so basically it's easy. The whole first album went like that. Yeah. So but for Slave to the Music, like the, the instrumental version was was done already. Yeah, he, Ruth said, okay, um, um, this is I have an instrumental track, um, and can you do something on, on this? And it fitted exactly. Yeah perfectly with Slave to the Music. So the next day I sent him and I said, what do you think about this? And then he said, I think this can be a hit. And that's how when he called, he called her. And for me, it, it, everything amazed me at that time, you know, because I didn't know that things would fall in the right place, right yeah, after exactly. each other, yeah. I, I believe Ruth also does backing vocals on the track. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can still remember that moment very well because we were in the studio and then uh, um, Nance, sang the, the, the chorus line on that and then she, uh, we were finished and then we, Ruth and me, we had this idea of, you know, why don't we do some backing forward, but Nance was already gone and then he said, well, let me record it and then he went into the, the singing booth and then I was with the, with, with the nuts and that's how we did it, yeah, yeah. it was great. That's funny. Yeah, it is. So yeah, what, what did happen? Because I believe it, it didn't become a hit straight away, right? No, it was a, it was a struggle, Twan. It was really, it, it, it frustrated me really because Everywhere the people heard the song, they were enthusiastic. Right? Right? Everybody was like, this is a hit, okay, but why don't we hear it on the radio? And it was a struggle, it was a hard time for the song to be, uh, to be heard, you know, and to be picked up by the radio. So after three months, or two or three months after release, you know, I didn't believe in it anymore. And this was the first time that I stopped believing in my possibility of being a successful artist. And it was a really sad, period for me because I because I had two children already so I had to do something to, to get money on the yeah. table you know and I invested everything in my career and I, it f felt like it would end right there so I can still remember the moment that I called Ruth for a, and I said Ruth, it was on a Friday I said Ruth, I, I think I'm gonna stop uh, with 24 7 because I have to work and that day just an hour before that we entered the tip parade and he said, well, I got news for you, my friend. <laughs> he said, we just entered the tip and my whole world changed yeah. and I believed in it again and I would thank God yeah. on my knees, yeah. It was meant to be. It was meant to be, yeah. probably. Yeah. 
probably that was the time, you know. Yeah. But it took us a couple of months, but once it got in the tip radar, it really lifted off. Yeah, because like Slave to the Music went like a huge hit. It was a big success, top 10 hit in lots of European countries. But it was also massive in countries such as Zimbabwe and Australia, for example. So yeah, did you expect the track to become like so big? The track was even bigger than that. We went Australia, we went South Africa, we went the, 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 the most, the main parts of, 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 of Africa we did. We also went touring. No, of course I did not expect this, but I was hoping for this. So yeah. what I, what I then, because I saw myself already and everything that I visualized came, came true actually, because I remember that we entered the tip parade and then we went from from 20 to 2 in the tip parade and then we entered at 35 in the top 40 and then we went straight to top 10, yeah. 8, 7, 6, 5 and I didn't know what, what I experienced. It, yeah. was un, it was like a dream, really. And and then, then we entered in Sweden, number one in the dance chart and then the international success came. Because 24 7 was well known in Europe with I Can Standing and All You Dreaming, which was a couple of years earlier, but now we went outside of Europe as well. And yeah. that, that was that was wonderful. Yeah, that was like the, ne the next level yeah. of 7 Everything changed because you, you can you should imagine, Twan, when you write a song, I still remember when I got this idea from Slave to the Music, all right? It just it just dropped in my mind and I started I still remember where I was the moment. And at that time, I'm the only one on the whole planet mm -hmm. that knows the song. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how it feels if you go to a different country and people sing that song yeah. because they heard it somewhere? It was a wonderful experience. Yeah. So do you have any idea how many copies have been sold during the years? From Slave to the Music? Yeah, Slave to the Music. No, oh. no. In total, there's millions, more than 20 million carriers. Yeah. But the amount of Slave to the Music itself, no, I don't know. But I, th I think that was your first golden record as well, Slave to the Music? Yeah, from the album. Yeah. From the album yeah. Slave to the Music, we were in uh, South Africa. Yeah. That is where I received the first big gold uh, award. Mm -hmm. and that was something that I knew from television. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, uh, a famous artist, they get gold records mm -hmm. and, and platinum records. And now I had this with my name on it, mm -hmm. with the track that I wrote, with my baby on that. That was. It was wonderful, and afterwards there came many awards, but that was the first yeah. one from the album Slave to the so Music. So that's always a special one, I guess. Of course, of course. Slave to the Music is, I still, and you know, I don't know if you can imagine how many times I did Slave to the Music live, but but uh, I still, I still get very happy when I do it, yeah. when I do it live on stage. Also because of the energy that we get from the audience, mm -hmm. but it's a very special, special song for yeah. me. And yeah, all super catchy. Super catchy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, 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 speaking of shows, do you still remember your very first ever show uh, with uh, 24-7? Mm. Yeah, I think I do, I think I do. And you should imagine that that um, that was in the period where 24-7 was a little bit, still a little bit known from I Can Stand and I Can Stand and Are You Dreaming? And then we had Slave to the Music, which was not a hit yet. Mm -hmm. So we were in, a, in some kind of twilight zone, you yeah. know? And the shows were, you know, people were like, who are these people? They knew I can stand it, but who's this guy? <laughs> you know, who is he? Yeah. And and so it was, a, it was, a, it was not what I expected yeah. it, how it would be, but I was very ambitious and I was, and I, you know, I trusted in the process and I was learning because that's how I learned how to perform and how to get a difficult audience in motion yeah. you know so it was very important that i had this period instead of having overnight success yeah, you know my true. my struggle period was a very 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 um, um, for me a, it, it taught me a lot how to perform how to be an artist what to do on stage yeah and engage with the crowd yeah yeah, yeah because i learned it the hard way yeah no, i mean i think you, yeah you probably started for dutch crowds yeah and yeah dutch crowds are pretty tough they you know they're they're spoiled yeah you know they're they're tough especially yeah. When you when you when you are unknown, you know, and you and we had the 30 minute show, mm -hmm. and, and I can say it. And Are you dreaming? Were well, the most famous one, but then you're seven minutes ahead, <laughs> and you still have 23 minutes from songs that nobody knew. Yeah. you know. So we I, we really had to learn how to how to how to keep the energy flowing in the audience, and later on with the success, then it just it helps you in, yeah. in, in every other way. So do you keep track on the amount of countries you did perform at? No, no. 
uh, because we went in, we, we were in, in every continent of the world, yeah. you know, but the amount of countries, no, I, I, I don't know. And I'm sure that there are many countries that I mean, I don't even remember that I have been there. You know, because in that time, in the 90s, when me and Nance uh, were touring around the world, we had several world, world tours in, in a relatively short time. We were in maybe three different time zones in a week. Wow. So it is a struggle, you know? And that is because nobody really knew how to handle a, su a worldwide successful act. Nobody. It was new for everybody, for, for, the, for the acts, for us, for me and Nance, for the management, for the record company, for the producer. Nobody knew how yeah. to handle it. So we just went out there and we just had to see how we yeah. would manage. You go with the flow. We go with the flow. So. There's a lot of things that I, I don't remember anymore, mm -hmm. how, how it was. It was hectic. It was great, but it was but hectic. hectic. Yeah. 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 So yeah, what was your absolute highlight from touring uh, in all those years? Uh, the absolute highlight, uh, we had many. We, we had crazy situations where we couldn't get, in, in South America, for instance, where we couldn't uh, walk on the streets. We couldn't, uh, we had a show in a big mall uh, for kids. And we had to be transported out of the mall with police and, and escorts and security. Yeah. It was crazy. So far away from home. And, and we also had this in South Africa. This was great. This was in, in Johannesburg. And to me, South Africa back then, this was 1993, 94. Uh, uh, um, Mandela was still in, in, on Robben Island. Mm -hmm. So. You should imagine that South Africa was different then than it is now, all right? And me and Nance, I'm black and she's white. So we were, uh, it was kind of sensitive, all right? But we were a huge success in the country. So for the record company, it was kind of a puzzle. How are we going to have these, what can they do? What can they not do? What can they say? How should they, how should they relate, relate, to, uh, relate to each other? And what they didn't know is, are they famous also in the townships? They didn't know that. The African record company didn't know that, but I wanted to be, I wanted to see the township. It's my roots, Africa. Mm -hmm. And this was a problem for the record company, <laughs> you know. A bit too dangerous. Maybe. Yeah, because they, they didn't know once. Are they known? Are you known there? Because they, they knew from the other, the white uh, people and the gray, let's say the gray part of the people, they knew that we were popular, but they didn't know from the township. But I insisted. I said, no, I want to go to the township. So you, let's arrange it. And I said, okay. And then they were sweating and they brought many uh, security cars, bodyguards, everything. And then we went into Soweto. Many of the people never went to Soweto before. Oh but they had to come to protect us. And then I said, okay, but you don't go out of the car, please. And then I saw a bunch of kids playing and they saw us and they, they were uh, uh, waving at us. And then I said, can you please stop, chauffeur? Can you stop because I wanna, I wanna get out of the car. They said, you cannot go get out of the car. But I really wanted to. And then we stepped out of the car, the security came and then all the kids came running 24 seven, 24 seven, oh, wow. yeah. And then we made pictures with them. We signed autographs and it was, a, that was one of the, most wonderful experiences, uh, emotional experience yeah. that, that, yeah, I can imagine. that we had. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was great. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, after a few years of touring and other hits such as Is It Love, Take Me Away, Leave Them Alone and Keep On Trying, 24-7 yeah. uh, had a short break and then you guys came back with Stella, a yeah. new singer. Mm -hmm. uh, after Stella, another singer joined the group for the single Like Flames and yeah. then Leanne became part of 24-7. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell how you and Leanne got to meet? Well, um, that was a period where, where Leanne in, was in, in the 24-7 uh, because first she sang with Sharon a, a short while, Sharon, Sharon Dorson, yeah. Um, and then there was this plan uh, that we would do 24-7, the three of us. Mm -hmm. So we, we had a photo shoot already with the three of us. And then something happened within the group uh, uh, that made that Sharon uh, went out of the group. But I met Leanne with an, an, an audition that she did. And I knew her from uh, the group where she was in. Ravish. Ravish, yeah. I, I, knew, I knew all the, the, the singers there because they were very famous. And Ruth Moray wanted to start up a 24-7 again. And they said, okay, well, what singer are we gonna, gonna have then? And then they said, and then Jan Dirk from the agency said, okay, do you know Leanne? And I said, well, I knew her from, from, from Ravish, but I don't know what she's doing now and if she's willing to, to do that. And then um, we called her, or the, the, the producer called her, uh, Janita called her, and then she came to the studio. And uh, she started singing. And we were amazed by, uh, first of all, how beautiful she was, mm -hmm. and then how good she was singing. And uh, 
So it was actually it was it was a, a it was a, a done thing, you know, because if she wanted to uh, to, to to join 24/7, she was welcome there. Yeah. So so she she came into the act, and then uh, Sharon was there uh, as well, and then Sharon went off, and then yeah. me and, and Leanne. Uh, you stayed, and then, and then I stayed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but yeah, you and Leanne are also a couple, and yeah. the proud parents of uh, Milan. Yes. So isn't it difficult to co combine like performing with like the, the touring life and like like uh, and being a parent? No, not at all. Because no, no, no it's it's not. It's, it's sometimes a challenge, but every every relationship is a challenge, yeah. you know. And and we also have State of My Network together, you know. So it's even more that we do together. So mm -hmm. not only are we a couple in relationship, we are a couple in parents, we are a couple in twenty four seven, but we are also business partners in our our yeah. coaching company. So the challenge is that you need to you need to to be balanced yourself. And then you balance your relationship, and then you are open mm -hmm. for for the challenges in life. You know, as long as you've got the right intentions, then you move through life in the correct way. Yeah. You know, and we have very big differences. All right, and I think that many people the challenges would be too big. Mm -hmm. You know, but but if you have the good mindset and the right intentions to make it work, then you will find yeah. a way always. It's the intention. Yeah, that's true. So, can you tell a bit more about the, the State of Mind Network? Yeah, um, I was, I was because State of Mind Network is is a, is a company that we have, is a coaching company that we have, which had two pillars. So one is State of Mind. So we work in to get people balanced in the state of mind, but people have problems with focus, motivation, with fear, with insecurity, with stress, depression. Um, then I work with that. Because I'm a neuroscientist in the meantime, I had studies in psych psychology and, and stuff like that. So I coach and help people with that. I write books about that as well. And then Leanne is the state of body part. She's, uh, she is an expert in, in uh, nutrition, in food, in movement, in mindfulness, uh, in hormones. She's very, very, very good at that. She's a very talented and, and, and gifted in her coaching. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the, those are the pillars from State of My Network and we help people f from, State of My Network has been there since 2006, I started it. And from 2010, we started going online with books and from 2013, Leanne joined. And from then, we started uh, uh, with the State of My Network, uh, trying to make the world a, a happier yeah. and a healthier place. Yeah. And I believe there are big plans coming up for the summer. Yeah, because what happened is, is when COVID uh, came in 2020, then uh, the whole 24/7 and the, the, the performance thing, they, you know, the, the world was locked, so we couldn't perform anymore. Nobody could perform anymore. But we had State of Mind Network, and we were online already. So we shifted our focus completely on trying to help people work with their body to be healthy and work with their mind to be healthy, and. State of My Network really exploded. Mm -hmm. We had we were busier even in the time of 24/7. We had more work than we had with 24/7, and and this is another passion that we have. You know, yeah. work and coaching and helping people. And so the media came, TV came, magazines came to ask us, "What are you doing? How come you're so successful when you're an artist? There are no shows anymore." Mm -hmm. So then we had a lot of TV shows. Eliane is right now also has her own TV show on RTL4 coming out. I'm gonna do some things on TV in the coming months. And we were asked to uh, start a wellness center in the Caribbean as well. So now by the end of this summer, in a couple of months, we're gonna we're going to the Caribbean. We're gonna stay there and we're gonna have a State of Mind Network International there, work from there. Mm -hmm. But still we have a State of Mind Network as well in Europe. Uh, run by other coaches, State of My Network coaches. Yeah. But this is this is really our our, our thing. Yeah. But I must say, Twan, that we will be in Europe a couple of months in the year to do our 24/7. Yeah, that, because that, that, that was going to be my next question. Like, what's going to happen with 24/7? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, this was immediately the question of the agency. Yeah. What is going to yeah. happen? Because you know the people want to see you perform. Because honestly, I must say that last year uh, we decided to stop with 24/7. All right. Because uh, Nance also came back and I was like, okay, you know, we did it for 10 years. So maybe, you know, we have to make room for them to, to do it. But then the agency said, well, there are so many uh, art, uh, uh, clients and people organizations asking specifically for you. Can we talk about you still doing it? And this is the reason why we, we, we said, okay, well, let's do, let, let, let's, let's do some, some shows that we like to do then. 
Uh, and now when we said that we're going to, uh, to uh, uh, the Caribbean, they came of course, but how, what are we going to do with yeah. the shows? <laughs> but we had an agreement to say that we will be the festival season, we will, we will oh, be yeah. back in, in Europe uh, to do our shows. Yeah. And the rest of the year we will be in sunny Caribbean, yeah. my friend. Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know, I know. Yeah. So, so do you also think we can expect like new 24-7 tracks in the future? I don't know, honestly, I don't know. I, I hope, yeah. you know, Tuan, I, I, I must be honest with you and tell you that in the past 10 years since I, or more than 10 years since I worked with Leanne, I, I asked Ruth Faraya many times, let's do something, you know, because there was this, this, this uh, anniversary when we were 25 years mm -hmm. old, then, then it was 30 years old. I said, let's do something, let's make a track. But for some reason, we never got to a point where we got, okay, I like this production, so I will write a song yeah, on that. Is, that is like good enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was not, I was not very satisfied with, with the ideas that, that, mm -hmm. that were there. So it never really got to that. But I'm willing. I yeah. really like to do that. Um, and, and if there's an opportunity, of course we will. But it, it's not up to me uh, yeah. alone. Yeah. So yeah, uh, a couple of years ago, 24-7 uh, came like uh, Nance, Jax and Hanks, they, they came back. Yeah. And they did a song, was it, Do You Really Want Me? Yeah. So, so what, what do you think about that? Uh, I, I know that, uh, I mean, I, I know Nance from the 90s. We haven't talked with each other for 30 years now, but I, I, as far as I know, I know that making music and performing is her passion, right? So I can imagine that when, when she sees that the 90s revival is already going on for 10 years, over 10 years, and that 24-7 is performing, and we do great shows, unbelievably great shows all over the world. I can imagine that, you know, she wants, she's eager to perform as well. So I'm very happy and I expected her to go on stage again. And I'm very happy for her to finally do her 24-7 thing. I know Jackson Hanks from then because they were the dancers back then. Uh, uh, and I hope that they are happy with what they're doing and that they make the 90s fans happy, because that is important, yeah. uh, that, that, that whatever happens, that, that we keep the 90s, uh, 90s alive. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy for her, and, and I hope that they will have a lot of success and enjoy the 90s audience as well as we have been doing the last 10 years. So do you think there will ever be a new track from 24-7 with you and Nance? No. To be honest, I don't, I don't think so. I think that the, the, the opportunity that we had to do that is long, it's long, uh, uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, I, I, there's also no reason for, for us to do that. I mean, I worked with Leanne now for over 10 years. I worked with Nance three years back then, you know, and I worked with Leanne now for over 10 years, yeah. and we are very successful with our show, so there is no reason uh, to, to, uh, to work together yeah. again, you know. So, but we can work in harmony apart from each other as well. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So what, what's the last time you spoke to Nance? The last time, honestly, Tuan was in the 90s. Yeah. So that was that was over 30 years ago. But you know the 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 really the really the thing that people would not expect maybe is that up and, up until now till today, I honestly do not know what the reason is that we don't we don't have contact yeah. with each other anymore. I never had verbal an argument with her. I don't know what it is that I did back then mm -hmm. that makes her angry up until today. I don't know. And I read it in the media and I heard it from the management back then that she doesn't want to talk to you anymore, that I was a bad guy, but I said, what happened then? What, what is it that I did? I honestly don't know. And I, I will tell you that since then, there were many times, I think a dozen times, when I wanted to come to her, not directly because she's avoiding my presence, Ask her, what is it that I did? I mean, I we were young. Probably I did things or said things, as well as her, as well as everybody in that time, that were not meant to hurt. But maybe I did. Mm -hmm. Tell me. I will apologize in the moment with love, you know? And even now, even if she would come to me now and, and tell me that this and that, and it's true, I would apologize with love. This is what I do, I'm a coach, I make people happy. Yeah. I take frustration away with people. So if I can help with this situation, why not? But all the moments that I tried, she didn't want the solution to come up. And then I, I'm wondering, what is it? Why do you protect this problem then? If there's a problem, let's get it out of the world. Yeah. What could I possibly have done? 
that after 30 years she's still angry. Because even a couple of months ago, it was on TV. She said on TV that I was a bad boy and that we will never talk again with each other and that she was, that I treated her in a wrong way, but I don't know what it is. What is it? Tell me. Let's get it out of the world. Or leave it behind. Then don't talk about it anymore. But if you don't want a sol solution for the problem, why, what is it with this problem then? What is it, why do you protect it? Why do you keep it alive actually? Is it an advantage in some way? You know, is the position of a victim, is it something that is a part of your story? Because, I wanna tell you honestly, take her, get her here and let her tell me. Publicly, I will apologize. If she can tell me what it was, I do not know. Really, you know, so, um, no, we didn't, we don't talk to each other anymore. I would love to do so. But if not, then it's okay as well. I don't hold on to negative energy, but I want to relieve people if they have yeah. negative energy and I can help with that, yeah. you know? So if maybe this could be a challenge for you, invite the both of us. Yeah, oh, let's see. And, and, and let's, and no, but if there's a real problem, I will, yeah. I'm, I'm out there. Maybe it's something that I forgot, tell me. Yeah. And so that you are relieved from this problem, yeah. you know, so that's, what I want. Is there something else you want to know about this? Ask me because I, you know, that's something that I sometimes I wonder. Please, let's solve the problem or stop talking about it because yeah. you're cultivating something that people start thinking about. What is the problem with this, Stacy? There is, there is no story. Honestly, there's not. You know, and if there is, tell yeah, me. Tell, tell me. the world what it is. Then, then we can solve the problem. Yeah. You know. So is there, I mean, you, you did so much already during the years. Is there still something on your bucket list, like music-wise? Well, actually, there are, uh, you know, I always have uh, um, uh, people, producers, big producers, famous producers, asking me to work together. Uh, but also the last couple of years, I was too busy with State of My Network. And if a song becomes a hit, <laughs> then you have to tour, have to then tour you have again, to tour, yeah. you know, so it's it's always a question, what am I going to do, yeah. you know, but yeah. but now in this moment, actually, while we're speaking, there is this great track that a producer sent me and asked me, do you want to work with this one? There's, there's, there's a female vocal on it mm -hmm. already, it's not Leanne, it's someone else, and I really like this mm -hmm. track. So the vocals, I finished the vocals yesterday, mm -hmm. and I'm going to record this one uh, next week. Uh, so I will keep you posted. Okay, good. But it's a great, it's a Eurodance track because Eurodance is my my yeah. music. That's what I feel. That's yeah. what I breathe. So it's it got to be something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, so what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time? Is it still like the, the Soul and Michael Jackson stuff? Also, I, I'm very, very, I mean, I listen to almost everything. I'm a very curious guy, you know, if, if, if there's a new song from a new uh, style of music and everybody loves it, I'm curious, I want to hear it, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I, I don't listen to one certain style exclusively. Uh, so it can be anything. I, I like 60s music, 70s, 80s, 90s, zeros, uh, Dutch music I like very much, you know, the real Dutch uh, mm -hmm. uh, lyrics singers, but also the urban Dutch, I like them very much. So, no, I'm kind of broad in my in, in my interest. So like uh, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I, because I'm a songwriter, so I'm always I listen to music in a different way, yeah. and 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 sometimes I I admire the way a song was written, mm -hmm. and then I hear things that other people don't understand what I'm talking about. So and that can be in every every style of music. Yeah. 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 And the last question: pineapple on pizza? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks a lot for your time and good luck with everything. Thank you very much for your for, for the opportunity to be here. Thank you. Good luck with the show. Thank you. All right. All right. That was it. This week's vlog, my interview with Stacy Seedorf and the story behind the 24/7 classic "Slave to the Music." Stacy, thank you very much for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like. Leave a comment in the comment section below and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And in case you missed it, I also did an interview with Ruud van Rijen about the 24-7 track I Can Stand It. Plus there's an interview with Nance available on my channel as well, so make sure to check them out. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.